by Sleep. I know a lot of you probably have never seen Birth by Sleep, so or if you haven't watched a Let's Play of it, I'm going to probably do one one day. But yeah, here's the Chronicles of Birth by Sleep. Master Xehanort had decided to abandon his pupil, Ventus, on the Destiny Islands. The boy's heart was fractured, useless. But his heart was saved when a new heart found Ventus's Ventus and helped him fill the void. Several years passed, and Ventus forgot what had happened. He had found a new home in the Land of Departure, a sacred ground defended by a long line of Keyblade Masters. There, he met two other youths named Aqua and Terra, and together they trained with Master Eriquis. Eriquis, I think that's how you say it, to become Keyblade Masters. Both Aqua and Terra should now he, should have been named Keyblade Masters, but Master Xehanort intervened, convincing Eriquis that to test his pupils with a mark of mastery examination. While Aqua passed the test, Terra did not, creating a rift between him and his friends. Shortly after came tidings of unversed, strange creatures that thrived on negativity, and Master Xehanort had broken off all communication. Terra left to solve both mysteries, Ventus ran away to be with his friend. As for Aqua, Eriquis tasked her with keeping Terra under surveillance and bringing Ventus home as soon as possible. Thus, their journey began. During Terra's travels, Master Xehanort whittled away at young man's ethics, at the young man's ethics, convincing him that the darkness and light were equally important, and that a balance must be kept. Elsewhere, Ventus met Mickey, another trainee, and found himself crossing keyblades with a mysterious masked boy may, named Vanitas. The three friends were reunited in Radiant Guardian Garden, but too much had changed. Terra felt betrayed by Eriquis and Aqua, and retreat, retreated deeper into Xehanort's clutches. Ventus sided with Terra and ran off again, and Aqua was left to deal with a mixture of guilt, concern, and love. Guided by fate, perhaps Terra arrived at the Destiny Islands and met Riku. He decided to bequeath the power of the Keyblade to this little boy, who reminded him so much of himself. Sometime after, Aqua visited these same islands and discovered what Terra had done. She, too, found a kindred spirit in Riku's friend Sora, and told the boy to stick by his friend and guide him, even though the darkest of times. Ventus had made a discovery of his own. While rescuing Mickey, he confronted by confronted by Master Xehanort and learned of his connection to a weapon called the Keyblade. Ventus returned to Master Eriquis in search of answers about his past, but the truth was a disaster waiting to happen, and Master Eriquis had no choice but to lock his pupil's heart away to keep that disaster contained. Terra arrived just in the nick of time and battled his master to protect his friend. But this was exactly what Master Xehanort had hoped for. Terra watched in horror as his new mentor struck the weakened Eriquis down. He had been fooled. Terra tried to move Ventus someplace safe, the Destiny Islands. But Vanitas, the boy with the mask, was already there. Join me! Join with me, become the Keyblade, he said. And then Ventus remembered the truth. Vanitas was a part of him, the darkness which had been extracted from his heart. Led by destiny, Terra, Ventus, and Aqua assembled in the Keyblade graveyard. In the distance, Master Xehanort and Vanitas appeared. A violent cra clash ensued, and at the end of it all, all, Terra's body was possessed by Xehanort. Meanwhile, Ventus have, 
having been forced into a clash with his counterpart, Vani counterpart Vanitas, chose the destruction of both of them to prevent the Keyblade from being forged. In the aftermath, Mickey was able to rescue Aqua and Ventus, but Ventus would not wake, and Terra was nowhere to be found. Aqua's journey was not over. Aqua recalled her master's teaching, teachings. After finding a safe place for Ventus to rest, she locked the land of departure, which would eventually become known as Castle Oblivion. Ventus's heart had been nearly sn snuffed out, so he retreated to the safety of Sora's heart, the same new heart that had saved him once before. Aqua found and confronted Xehanort, who had been possessed Terra's body. After a long fight, Aqua dove into the darkness and sacrificed herself to usher Terra back to the realm of light. Aqua wandered the realm of darkness for a decade before meeting a stranger there. This stranger told her about a certain boy who had become the savior of all worlds. When Aqua heard the boy's name, tears filled her eyes and her face beamed with hope. Birth by Sleep Guardian Bell All right! So, that is the end of... Hey Axel, oh. you haven't forgotten. Hmm? What? You made us a promise. I did? That you'd always be there. To bring us back. Yeah. Got it memorized? <laughs> Best friends forever. Where? What happened to me? Roxas. That's me. Dylan. Alias. Evan. Yenzo. the ones who joined the organization here. I guess Xehanort doesn't count. But where are Bragg and... Isa? Get ready for another Chronicle, folks! Um, let's see. I remember this game quite... Well, not quite well, but I remember everything. Wait, what? Did I just say skip? I said skip on accident. I'm going to the bell tower, and I'm going to let this load, and then I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to say in the video for right now. Okay, reports. No. Mementos, that's what I want. Chronicles. When Roxas first began, became part of the organization, he spent his days on missions, collecting hearts, and befriending another member named Axel. However, when Axel was sent to Castle Oblivion on a special mission, Roxas teamed up with the organization's new 14th member, a girl named Shion. Slowly, the two warmed up to each other. Once Axel returned from his mission, he, Roxas, and Shion developed a routine of ending each, each busy, a busy day by having ice cream atop the Twilight Tower. Uh, uh, t oh my god. Atop the Twilight Town Clock Tower. There, they talked about work, friendship, 
their memories, and even the meaning of a heart. One day, Xion was ordered to dispatch, dispatch an imposter, Riku, who had donned the organization's robe to protect Z Sora. But Xion was overpowered and told her Keyblade was a sham. After failing a second mission, she slipped into a coma. When Xion finally woke, Ro Roxas, Roxas's daily routine resumed a kind of normalcy. But something in his friend had changed. Slowly, Xion began to question her own existence. On day 255, Xion visited the Castle Oblivion and discovered what she was. Roxas waited for Xion at the clock tower, but she never came. The next day, he learned she had deserted the organization. Roxas tracked her down and tried to convince her to return, but Xion drew her keyblade threateningly. It was only once Axel appeared that he and Roxas were able to bring her back by force. After learning some of the truth about Xion, Roxas found his own existence thrown into question. He had lost faith in Axel and the organization, who had kept so much hidden from him, and decided to run away. Meanwhile, Xion had tracked down a girl named Namine and decided to return her share of Sora's memories to their owner. Axel hunted her down and made a double-edged promise. Keep running. I'll always be there to bring you back. After barely managing to keep that promise, Axel collapsed and Xemnas, the organization's leader, took Xion away. Aimlessly, Roxas found himself wandering towards the clock tower. There, Xion revealed herself to be not a her at all, but a faceless puppet, puppet that the organization had created as a cage for Sora's memories. The last of those memories were inside Roxas, Sora's nobody, and she would have to take them from him to become a complete Sora replica. The two fought, and Xion got her wish. She was defeated. As the memories that made up her up returned to Sora, she ceased to exist, and vanished from the minds of all who knew her. Confused and angry, Roxas decided to challenge Xemnas and the organization, free their hearts they had collected, and destroy Kingdom Hearts. But Roxas was not strong enough to win, and if he fell here, Sora would never awaken. So Riku confronted him. In his mind, Riku had heard the last of a girl, the last wish of a girl whose name he could not no longer remember. To stop Roxas, he nearly failed and had to allow the darkness in his heart to take over before he was able to subdue Roxas. A boy named Roxas woke up in his room in Twilight Town after having another strange dream. Excited, he ran off to meet his friends at their usual spot. Only seven days of summer vacation left. And that's going to be the end of the... This is going to be like a little bit of a break time for me. I'm going to try to record one more thing tonight and then... Yeah, I'll start saving and uploading. So yeah, that will be it for right now. I hope you've all enjoyed the game so far. I hope you've all enjoyed me raging at the freaking boss that kept defeating me on his last leg. <sighs> okay. But anyways, if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe by clicking that button right there. Give a like. Check out my other playlists while you wait. There's a lot of good stuff that I've beaten already. <clears throat> and uh, also feel free to follow my Twitch and Twitter. That is also down below in the description. Twitter I usually update like at least once every day to talk about the videos or something like that. Saying 
these videos are going up, or sorry, cannot put up s these videos until later, or whatever. Or, yeah, I don't, something like that. So yeah, feel free to follow my Twitter, and yeah, that will be it for this recording session. So I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you next time.